the war in Korea was over. Captain, now Major Bennett Marco, had been reassigned to Army Intelligence in Washington. It was, by and large, a pleasant assignment, except for one thing. Night after night, the Major was plagued by the same reoccurring nightmare. discovery which we owe to the hydrangea concerns the influence of air drainage upon plant climate. Many years ago when I was traveling about the country I noticed magnificent hydrangeas on the hills where the air drainage was uh, perfect and very poor specimens or perhaps none at all in the valleys. Formerly, we used to consider sheltered valleys more favorable to plants than hilltops. But the avoidance of late spring and early autumn frost enjoyed by sites with good air drainage, where the cold air can drain safely away to lower levels, gives the hills a decided advantage. Thus, it was the hydrangeas that gave the first pointer in another modern discovery of horticultural importance. From this, it might appear that the hydrangea is a fairly simple plant, but there are more complications. The cultivation of hydrangeas was evolved from a number of varieties originally found in Japan, not all of which, of course, have the same characteristics. Two of them do not share the quality of producing blue flowers in mineral-rich soils. Allow me to introduce our American visitors. I must ask you to forgive their somewhat lackadaisical manners, but I have conditioned them, or brainwashed them, which I understand is the new American word, to believe that they are waiting out a storm in the lobby of a small hotel in New Jersey, where a meeting of the Ladies' Garden Club is in progress. You will notice that I have told them they may smoke. <laughs> I've allowed my people to have a little fun in the selection of bizarre tobacco substitutes. <laughs> Are you enjoying your cigarette, Ed? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Yak dung. Oh, tastes good. <laughs> like a cigarette should. <laughs> <laughs> now then, comrades. May I present the famous Raymond Shaw. The young man, you've flown 8,000 miles to this dreary spot in Manchuria to see. Raymond, pull your chair over here by me, please. I am sure you've all heard the old wives' tale that no hypnotized subject may be forced to do that which is repellent to his moral nature, whatever that may be. Nonsense, of course. Oh, you note-takers might set down a reminder to consult Brenman's paper. Uh, experiments in the hypnotic production of antisocial and self-injurious behavior, or Wells' 1941 paper, which was titled, I believe, Experiments in the Hypnotic Production of Crime. Or, of course, Andrew Salter's remarkable book, Conditioned Reflex Therapy, to name only three. Or if it offends you that only the West is working to manufacture more crime and better criminals. Against the modern shortages? I suggest Krasnogorsky's primary violence motivation, or Sarav's, the unilateral suggestion to self-destruction. My dear Jan, as you grow older, you grow more long-winded. And we get to the point, has the man ever killed anyone? Or has he not? I apologize, my dear Dimitri. I keep forgetting that you're a young country and your attention span is limited. Tell me, Raymond, have you ever killed anyone? No, ma'am. Not even in combat? In combat? Yes, ma'am, I think so. Of course you have, Raymond. Raymond has been a crack shot since childhood. Marvelous outlet for his aggressions. May I have the bayonet, please? Not with the knife. 
with the hands. With the hands? Here, have him use this. Ah, da, da. Raymond, whom do you dislike the least in your group here today? The least? That's right. Well, I guess Captain Markham, ma'am. You notice how he is always drawn to authority? Uh, that won't do, Raymond. We need the captain to get you your medal. Who else? Well, I guess Edna Voli, ma'am. Ah, oh, that's better. Now then, Raymond, take this scarf. And strangle Ed Mavoli uh, to death. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Hey, Sarge, cut it up. <laughs> quiet, Ed, please. Now you just sit there quietly. Cooperate. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 